All right, to Professor, the policy at the Policy Institute, Con uh, King's College, Andrew McClaird, joins us now via Skype to talk more about this. Andrew, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, well, um, well, we're talking about two issues here, the elections and then, uh, of course, the London attacks, you know, and all that. Well, let's begin with the attacks. The Italian authorities did say that they warned the British authorities about this fellow. So how is it that they let him uh, slip under the radar? There is always a danger after attacks like this that people concentrate on the physical policing, which is our last line of defence. And they forget about the first line of defence, which is detection and intelligence. And we often ask moderate Islam, please speak out against these attacks and please report any suspicions. And these people have been reported. These people were known to the intelligence services. So you ask exactly the right question. How did these people slip through the net? And funding has been cut to the police and security services. And police and security services do a very, very good job, but have said they have to monitor thousands of names and thousands of people who are suspects, but simply don't have the resources to do it. So what we need to do is ensure that our police and security services get the resources they require. Well, in the wake of uh, recent attacks and seeing how things have been happening so far, isn't it time that the world... Uh, started to think about Trump's own idea of fighting terrorism? Well, Trump's idea antagonizes all of Islam and antagonizes moderate Islam, who are the greatest allies we have against radical Islam. Moderate Muslims are dying in a number much higher than Christians. And if we're going to get effective intelligence to prevent attacks, we need to have moderate Islam want to report the suspects just like they're doing. So actually, Donald Trump is being counterproductive because he's creating a narrative of us versus them, where us is Christians and them is all of Islam. That's a wrong narrative. The correct narrative is us, all moderates, against them, all radicals, radical Christians, radical Muslims, radicals of any religion. So Donald Trump's narrative is exactly wrong. All right, Theresa May uh, cut down the number of police officers in the streets. About 20,000 were withdrawn um, uh, across. And she has been criticized for this. You think this is the reason that it does appear that the UK, I beg your pardon, Britain, it's become susceptible to attacks now? Well, it's not just cutting police on the streets. As I said, the police on the streets is the last line of defense. The first line of defense is the intelligence, being able to win over communities, understand what radicalizes youth and try and have programs to counter the radicalization of youth and also encourage moderate communities to be able to report suspicious people. So yes, she's cut back on police, but no, she didn't give enough resources to the intelligence services anyway. And nor do I believe we are working hard enough to reach out to the moderate Islamic communities and say it is us moderate Muslims, moderate Christians against all radicals. So we've got to do what I call a three-prong approach. One, we've got to set the environment in which we don't alienate different parts of our community. Second, we need to have an intelligence service detect particular individuals who are vulnerable to radicalization. And then thirdly, we need to have a security service that's prepared to detect and stop people if they decide that they're going to launch attacks. Now, every single bit of that chain is in place, but where we're the weakest is giving enough resources to the police and security forces to detect an event before it happens. Well, Andrew, it's just a couple of days now to uh, the elections, and the, 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 the Tories' lead is now been cut to just one point. Uh, Theresa May, does she have to worry about this? Oh, look, I think it's going to be a much closer election than everybody thought. I still think she's going to sneak over the line. I think she will get a majority, but a reduced majority from before. So there will be some pressure and criticism uh, of her inside her party for calling the election in the way that she did. Um, if by a surprise she wasn't to, to get a majority or, shock horror, if Labor was able to cobble together a coalition with the SNP and the Lib Dems, I think that would be an incredible shock for the people of Britain and it would open up the entire question of Brexit again. Well, uh, Professor uh, Andrew McLeod at the Policy Institute, King's College, we thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you very much for your time.